Not for me. Okay. All right. First thing, well, this is going to be more of an information meeting for you guys. This is that time of year where uh, February 28th is when I'm going to know I put the evaluation notices for 2014. On the ag land, I need to let you know what's happening because you guys will probably do some calling this year. Uh, we, I know you have in the past, but uh, the irrigation is going to be an issue this year for a lot of people. Uh, before I get on that, I was going to go ahead and get, let you have. Did you get the new zoning people? These are the zoning people. Um, we re, re elected, and, uh, and the three that um, was going to run out of the term, they said they would all take it again. So we're all up to date, and uh, we don't need anybody else right now to take the place. They did both signs, uh, you know, the the uh, one was for the Booster Club out here for the uh, championship sign on the JD land. That was approved. And then the other one that's already built, the sign's already built, that was approved. So, okay. And we sent that on, the, on the, to the state then, and so they'll get their license through that and all. So, just wanted to get you caught up on that. Okay, on the egg, on the egg ground, let me give you guys a First two pages. Do you want this? You want to get what we're talking about? I got it. This will be in the in the newspaper uh, next week. The first two pages. That's our market day, and that statue-wise has to be published in the newspaper. We go one step further, and we list all the soil types in Stafford County and we compare the 2013 with the 2014, that's on the, the next two pages. Um, if you look on there, the, um, and it doesn't really, this year it doesn't matter which soil type you pick, um, they all went up to dry crop and the irrigation. Um, one of our, you go down through there, 58.91, that's a predominant soil type in the county. Uh, dry crop last year was $276 an acre. Dry crop now would be $300 an acre. You go over to the irrigation, it was $320 an acre and went to $357 an acre. Visually looking at that, you think offhand that, that that's, a, that's a high increase, but it's even higher when, when you load the tables. Because what we're doing this year, and this is new for this year, is in the past, we pretty well went by depth of the well, and that was about it. Mm -hmm. uh, now the state, we're, we went by this water ratio. How much water you use is, is going to be what the water ratio table is going to be used with. So, what we received, we have the list of, we have two big books, and we have every water right license in there. And what it does then, is it gives you all their watering information over the last, since 2008. Uh, you look at their acre feet, to give you a quick scenario, you use their acre feet, and we use the last three years is what we use. The last three years of their acre feet, we took the, the average of those numbers, and then you take the uh, acres irrigated. You divide those to get a water ratio. And then that water ratio will go to the water ratio table, and this is all given to us by the state, just like the egg values are. When I when I've done my final review, I've seen some parcels go up thirty thousand dollars on one parcel. That's what you got. Wow. This is an issue. Why would you only use three years for your ratio? Um, because um, it's a little more accurate on there. But I mean, I mean, and the last three summers have been pretty extreme, though. I mean. Wouldn't you get a better average for that ratio in five or seven years? The, well, we couldn't go seven. We could have used five. The one thing that was different is some of the water table, some of the water has changed, and it actually would have the ones we did actually would have hurt them. Okay. And so that's why we referred back to the three years. We went through like the first thirty, and it actually it hurt most of them. Okay. So that's why we kicked it to the three. And one other thing that we did is on the report it gives like a, on this one here 125 acres well we after you do our GR, gis they're only paying taxes on 121.27 acres we actually used our acres there. 
and that helped also. So, which one did it hurt the most? Irrigated or uh, irrigated? Irrigated. I'll give you. I'll give you some some preliminary numbers uh, on this here. In 2013, um, our irrigated value. Now, this is irrigated value. Okay, was 18 million. $302,800. That's $18,302,800. Okay? That's 2013. Uh -huh. 2014, and this would be the first year for the water ratio, right for that, it's $27,598,820. Okay? And in 2015, Dry crop, the difference it gained four four million five hundred thousand. So I guess that answers your question. <laughs> um, and, and, and one thing that that you know this is it's and, and even the foreign everybody I've talked to you know before I gave you these numbers said you know this is the way to do it. Actually, tax me for what I'm using. Actually, tax me for the water I'm using, not just the well bed. Give me some adjustment for what's going on. So I think it is a better, it, it is a better way. I think this first year using it this way is going to be a shock, though. I do. So I'm going to set aside a lot more. That's a, big, that's, <laughs> that's a big increase. I mean, that's it, it is. It is. So. And this all came down to the state. Yes, yes. Well, I'm not going to just put it on the state. Right. I, I think it was everybody that that was involved said this is a better way to treat ag on on the irrigation without an increase. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, before we loaded, before I downloaded the tables for the it's the water ratio report that comes from the state. We'll go back to that. Uh, we owned the the values was two twenty million. So when we have uploaded the new water ratio table, that's when, because when we was entering this, we didn't see, you know, we were thinking, you know, we're going to break, we're going to break even, you know, on this whole project. And this, this was a whole summer long project. Um, but then when I downloaded that table, that's when we, that's when I see, that's, yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been quite a break either. Would it? I mean, either it increased a little bit. A little bit. Well, this why would dryland increase if it was? No, I was just talking about irrigation because of the way that the old table was. And if you just look at the values, because some of them on the, with the old table, some of the irrigation actually would have went down. So we wasn't going to see that gain. But then when we loaded in the, the new table, then that's, that's when we all started. And yes, the table is ordered, right? Because I go to check it. <laughs> About five times. So. so I just wanted you guys to know. Now here's some here's some stuff here. And, 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 and you know, I don't know how much you guys like to read or look at it. But this is kind of some information. The first two pages on dry land. The, the second two pages, the page three and four is on the irrigation. And the last page on the grassland. What this is... <coughs> It just let you see, you know, the component put into it, the, the procedure, and then the sources where we get the ag use values. Now, the only thing I put on you guys is up here in the red is ag, ag use values are done on an eight-year period. So it's, it's done from 2005 to 2012. Those, those years are in the study to do the 2014 values. So anywhere you see it, uh, years down here. That's actually the old years on there. They just haven't changed this for a long time. But it's year 2005, 2012 on there. And we'll have this available to the crop you know, and so forth on there. And then on the real estate, on the rest of it, I gave you a, there's a colorful page underneath the, what's going to be the market study. Uh, this won't be in the newspaper, just that, that one page with the uh, market study. 
this here is what I, I go over with every property owner that talks about it, when it talks about their house and so forth. And what it is is one column to the right is um, it just gives them a little more information for their location. Um, so do the 2014 values, I used houses that sold in 2011, 2012, and 2013. And that three year span of sales, we had 160 houses sell. That's my first market study. Um, and then after that, it's broke down. As you can see, uh, the rural area, we had 24 dwellings sell. They're going to see approximately between a 1% to 14% increase. Um, and then St. John had 62 sales. St. John's market wants to go up approximately 7%, and then so forth and so on. So it's kind of a nice information sheet when people come in the state from there from Maxville and they say, well, you know, Maxville has no sales. Well, you're pretty close to right. You had 12 sales in three years. You know, but we still by statute have to value your property. So, and then it just gives you a little information going down through there. And, uh, commercial properties, we're seeing kind of an upward trend of about 5%. And then these trends are coming from the sales themselves. Is where that's derived from. So, so that's kind of my information for you. These will be mailed out on the 28th. I got something drastically would go wrong between now and there. So, and then each prop owner, and it's on the back of the valuation numbers, they have 30 days to appeal mm -hmm. back. That's all I have. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Farmers, thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's just something that, you know, I think you guys enjoy now. Yeah. Yeah. This one? The phone will ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's got to be some changes. I mean, it's not just down, you know, to the property owner and to the business owner that's, that's funding the state. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting to do away with the mortgage registration, they're wanting to do away with this and do that. And I think we're going to get to a point where property owners and business owners can't survive. Mm -hmm. Way too many exemptions handed out. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of some of the exemptions uh, and so forth, but you know, our opinion sometimes don't matter. So, anyway, we're, we'll make it through. I thought this year, I thought what I would do then on evaluation notes, I thought about putting the county clerk's phone number on. Oh, that's what I would say. That's all the time. And then, so. Oh, oh. I don't get any respect. That is respect. No, it's not. Number six don't, don't do it. Carl, please don't do that. We don't need another office with a recording. Wow, that's <laughs> why so that's all I have, you guys. Have voice oh, okay. You get the real thing, don't you? Get real voice. You guys have anything for me, or, or you have any questions later? What? I'll say nothing. And, and that, and that, this here, the market state, that'll go in the paper next mm -hmm. week. Then, so. Good. <laughs> yeah, sir. You know, it does help, though. I mean, oh, they can yeah. see what it is. The only thing bad is on the irrigation. They don't know that water table. So what we do is we're go we're as soon as they call in, we're go we're go find out water ratio table right away, and, and we're go and we can show them everything that we've done. We can show them, you know. And if we're wrong, we're corrected. If we're not, there's nothing we can do. And that's the disadvantage, you know, for the farmers. They they can appeal water, but they really aren't going to get any satisfaction because on the on these on these soil types. When you're in a district, and, and you and, and you can't pay to go get the farm plug, you know, to get to, to test your soils, and, and that might not even be wrong anyway. Uh, there's really no, it's not going to change. There's no recourse for them, really, except to just the peace of mind to tell them how they feel. But I've never seen when we go to the court tax bill, it's never been changed. Not on not on farm. 
Yeah. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. There's so old times. Uh oh. That, that dirt's dirt. No. Dirt's not dirt. <laughs> They're probably afraid the soil types. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Carl. Carl. Maybe get some forks. We got 15 minutes. Oh, What's that? Oh, I thought I was supposed to meet you at 8 30. Or 12. Can I know it? You can't for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's I guess we assumed that since your letter that that you could change the line about being Well, I still was going to meet with him about okay. that. I just, I couldn't hold off. I couldn't, uh, I mean, it wasn't going to change, I guess. At that point, I knew it wasn't going to, the talk, the talk wasn't going to change my, my decision, but I still, you know, wouldn't mind to talk to you guys. Just, just, I mean, answer any questions you might have. I mean, I, I think I talked to you that day, and, I, I don't remember. I don't know. I'm working on four hours of sleep. So I'm a little foggy. Um, I don't remember exactly what we talked over that day, um, or if, if anything was left open. I know there was a few things afterwards that I was thinking, of, man, I wish I would, I wish I would mention that, or I wish we even, you know, kind of delved into that a little bit, but. Uh, some of the things that you didn't enjoy about the job of being in the office and things like that, I thought it wouldn't hurt for everybody to hear that. Yeah, that you know, and that's that is probably my biggest. Uh, I don't want to say that's my biggest thing, but the biggest improvement I think to myself is going to be that I get to get off work at three thirty and pick up my kids from school. I mean, that's going to be amazing. I've never been able to do that. You know. I'm, just, just the fact that you have to miss all kinds of things. I, I know it comes with the territory, but um, it's nice to not have to miss so many things sometimes. You know, um, the combination of working in the office and being on call—that's a little tough. You know, it's where Monday through Friday um, you're there, and, uh, and you know that makes sense. And then if if we had more volunteers, I don't think it'd be an issue. I don't think it'd be as you know as big of an issue because. Well, tears were taking call when I first came on, and it was like, you look at the schedule, like, man, I'm off today, or, you know, and, and so you spotted days all across the, the month, and but within the last, ooh, the last year, two years, even, maybe, it's been, it's been dry, I think, you know, and I really attribute it to um, having a full-time office out there. You see it with the fire department a little bit, and you see it with EMS, where, and I think another thing is there's just not many people that want to take their time. You know, mm -hmm. Nobody wants to give their time to the community. Um, so you don't, you have a real hard time even getting volunteers. So I just, I'm giving up too much time with my kids being as young as they are. And, and um, I kind of, I want to get back to, I want to say stress free, but not the stresses that I have. And, and um, I like the fact that well, I'm a uh, Cub Scout gym leader, so I, I, that's awesome that I get to go up 3.30, take the Cub Scouts any day of the week, you know. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about call time um, for, the, for the city on you know, weekends or every other. At this point, even, um, if they got hired another one at 3.30, um, which would allow me to you know, pick my EMS schedule instead of here you have to do this because we have no one else. So, that time is the biggest issue. That's that really is time. Family time is the biggest biggest issue with my So your plans for now are to still help with the EMS. I absolutely want to, yes. And I probably should talk to Dr. Farmer also because you know it is his is he is the medical director, and so I guess he gets final say if he would even allow me as a volunteer to work in a paramedic. You know, I mean, because I won't have the all time I have, so I won't even, um, I'll have less time to keep my skills sharp, I guess you'd say. And so, 
I know in the past he's had an issue. I don't know if it's the individual he had an issue with, or if it was just that they didn't work here anymore, and he didn't want a paramedic that he couldn't, he, mm -hmm. you know, type, focus on, or something, you know what I mean? He, he knew what was going on if you work here, but it's not your full-time job anymore. He just, it's not. So I, I probably should at least talk to him just to see what his thoughts are. But um, if he, if, you know, if he doesn't, um, if, and if he doesn't want me or a volunteer to practice as a paramedic, um, I'll probably, what I'll probably do is, is try to pick up some hours in the track just, just to be able to keep my paramedic at least. So, and then, you know, I would still have that certification. But, and, and even at that, even if I could only practice at an EMG level or something on the ambulance, that would be fine. Because a lot, of, a lot, um, it doesn't always go to that ALS level. I can make any patient an ALS patient basically by, with a few different, you know, with an EKG or giving them a mm -hmm. But is it absolutely necessary? No, I mean, you can get really good quality ELS care and they're fine. So, as long as I keep my paramedic certification, um, you know, and then maybe just practice it and level if that's what he wants. You know, but I still do want to absolutely do. You know, it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out my schedule to know what I can and can't do. Um, so I don't, I don't, I've, you know, on paper or talking about it, it you know, it, it works. <laughs> It, it always works when you when you say it, but when it comes to doing it, that's when it's like, oh, oops, didn't think about this or something. You know, so. it, it'd take a little bit before I can probably really pick, really pick, pick up and pick days. So they are going to be pretty short-handed for a while. Um, and another thing on on that is the emergency management part of it. Um, I've been making a list out there the last few days of everything that I do, trying to, I think at this point I've pretty much told them about everything that I can think of. I've printed off email contacts, I've, I've printed off everything I can think of, you know, I handed it out to them. I know <laughs> maybe not even half of it makes sense, you know, to them. So, um, I think maybe Misty has spoken with Steve potentially already, because she made the comment um, that Steve had said something about, like, uh, I think it was, see, the LAPC meetings have to be published with the public meeting. And, uh, so she made a comment like that, and so I don't know if that's just something she remembers from the past, or, so, I mean, she can always ask me, or she probably have to see too, so. Um, but there's a lot of things with emergency management that is going to be difficult. For one, the emergency manager in the county, as I understand it, is the only one that can request state resources in a disaster. It may fall onto you guys if somebody doesn't have that, even just the kind of, you know, they don't know, they're, they're not everybody, not every emergency manager in the state of Kansas has a certified emergency manager, that title. So it's not a requirement, obviously. But that, I, I think that's how it is. I, I think it's emergency manager and it, basically if that person's gone, deceased, whatever happened, it falls to whoever's, whoever's above. And I guess at this point it would be. What's it take to get the certification? To get the certification to the state of Kansas, you have to have so many, they have a list of the trainings that you have to complete. And a lot of it is, um, a lot of it's online stuff you can pick up. It's mostly just hours in that aspect, so you can get a lot of that online. There are some in-class stuff that you have to do. You have to, you have to have so many years. Um, I think even so many years in an emergency management with something to do with emergency management, like in your top, in your job description. Um, you also, I believe, have to be sponsored by. Because I got a sponsorship letter from an out of county emergency manager, I can't remember who it was now. Um, you have to have a sponsor that 
I just want to sponsor you, and then you send that application in. And, well, and then you have to have done some exercise, some disaster exercises. You actually had to be in the planning and development stage of some exercises. So, and it's gotten a little bit more stringent on that. Um, but it's, it's stuff that takes time, but it can be done with really with little effort, I'd say. I mean, you can do, it doesn't have to say like the exercise, it doesn't have to be an exercise that Stafford County does. You can go help another county or you can go to the, there's a lot of regional exercises that happen, which is where probably most everybody keeps their certification up, is going to regional exercises. Because then those things, they're in a book, and there's an entire class on how to design an exercise. And it takes approximately six months of planning, is what the state says it should, to put on a, not even a full-scale exercise. So, uh, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of little details, but I've tried to get everything printed out that I can think of. You know, LEPC meetings, you only have to have like one a year. We do them quarterly. Um, LEPC actually is not a county organization. It's a completely separate entity. Uh, it's just always been that the emergency manager has been the, the lead for the LEPC stuff. And it makes it a lot easier because uh, a tier two reporting um, hazardous materials and things that has to go through emergency management. It also has to go to LEPCs. LEPCs are actually the ones that are, um, are supposed to handle that public release of information for that stuff. So it's always worked out better than the emergency manager actually handles it. Um, there are some projects going on right now. One of them is a regional 19 county LEPC project that is a must. Um, it's a $1,900, I think I handed you guys um, just an informational thing on it. Um, we're a little over halfway towards that soft match. We took hours worked on it. Um, but there'll be some more paperwork to sign and things like that that'll have to be done just to play along. But it's due to the way they wrote the grant, every every 19 county has to participate in the region. So um, mitigation plan, that's another one that's coming, and that's a must. So I've tried to, um, I've got all these meetings set up and I've given the dates and the contact information to all of them, so. Who did you share the information that you put in down with? Missed in down. Missed in down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, can, uh, I can write up something a little, little, because I basically I get misty some of my note taking. I was just writing stuff down as I could think of it. And, a way for me to be able to explain it to her. So, um, if you guys want to know or have a list of kind of the, the, the musts, and, uh, I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah. And there, there's even some that I'm not even aware of. I'm sure. I mean, the state of Kansas has so many requirements. Do you get a lot of feedback from the state. I get emails from the state every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and someone else, any different thing, somebody else handles. It is not like one contact with the state. And this person does this, and this person does this, and, and so you email this person about, hey, I need to get this done. Well, this is the person you need to get a hold of. So you email them. Now, this is the person you need to get a hold of. And it's just like, so it's kind of a pain. It's, it's, I'm still trying to figure it out, even. I mean, as far as who, proper contacts, and what all the, the details are. Um, the EMPG funds in the past. Because for one, it's a requirement to have, to have a certified emergency manager as one of the requirements. And beyond that, the requirements are too too much, too much work um, for them to be able to do. So I don't think they should need to worry about and it is a it's a grant that has that has gone back towards um, salaries. Ten thousand dollars, is that one I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But it takes for a small county it takes a lot of work. Um, again, it's those exercises. You gotta have multiple exercises. So, I think that one, I think that's one that should be spoken and not doing. But, I can kind of get, if I can get on online, I can get, um, there are some places I can find that like the bare minimum state level, you have to do this. Um, it, you know, I can kind of get that stuff, but beyond that, it's it's kind of muddy as far as finding some of that stuff. So, so you don't 
find any one person that they're real helpful. When Steve left, Jim left, which is the South Central region, I don't really know what his title is, he's kind of the guy over this region. He is sort of the main contact. That information that Steve had left and contacts and things like that was never disseminated at the state's level. I had to go through and find every person I needed to find. I emailed Jim Lefkowitz and have told him what's going on. Um, I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to be the same. I don't think it'll get out of his email again. So I can email him, you know, again, and I've emailed more than one person too, just to make sure that you know, there's another person up there, Marlo, actually, I think she's from Stafford. Actually, she's from the city of Stafford. I forget her maiden name. Um, she has come down here early on when she was working in the state. She might be another person to, to shoot an email to, um, just to try to get that. Because there's just there's so many sub departments with the state, and every one of them, they don't talk to they, they don't talk together. They, just, they have no idea. You ever had direct communication with the lead half an hour? Um, he is the boss. Right. In, I have spoke with him in person few years ago, but yeah, that, it may be better just to go up, up to him or his secretary and say, please do this. Yeah. Um, Angie, Angie, Angie Morgan, him. yeah, and Angie Morgan too, she, she would be one to, she'd be another to send that out to, and hopefully it would get disseminated down instead of across me. Yeah. So. He is. I can't think he's over the swamp up there, and he would be as knowledgeable and as good a guy to talk to as he was. I did not get any help from the, his underlings. We're supposed to have a council hearing tonight. But I appreciate you coming in and I appreciate the fact that you're going to be here and give us some more feedback if we need it. Yep. And, and, and help you know, whoever's out there. Anybody can call and ask. I mean, I'm, I may not even have the answer to that. So I look at it and think, what do do with this, you know, so I may not have the answer, but maybe I can point it to the person that does, I guess. So, that would be a good resource to have. I stepped up in the blast, and I can tell you that if it wasn't for the county, I mean, working for the county, I wouldn't have had the experiences that I've had, absolutely not. I mean, so, it's definitely, it's definitely improved my overall ability. I think it adds another level of depth to what I can do. So. It continues to be a paramedic, you know, as long as I do, that we can meet all the other people. Yeah. And I think you do enjoy that part of it. So. Absolutely. Um, the good thing is, I might be able to get it going with fires, too. I won't be stuck <laughs> sitting in the ambulance staring at fire. That's the reason I'm always It's nice to be dirty occasionally. Adolescent days. <laughs> <laughs> feel like you wore yourself out. That's when you know yeah. you had a good day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, you, you know that you've accomplished something when you put the fire out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> take a shower. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you, Nick. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Okay. We're going to recess. again. <laughs> Okay. Well, I feel like, uh, <laughs> my stuff's not. I mean, good timing. Good timing, Phil. We were. Yeah, we just had a. We were close. I had to get me to straighten up. Straighten up. Yeah, that's what you said. So I have a question. Are we in session now? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. Good. So, two and four. Our clerk's not helping. Full potential. Sunday. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, who is that from? Centrally. Since you're being nice. Centrally.
pitches for a drop out here. That's the 50. Their lines on the south side of there, so a little under. Could drop on the north side of that guy's got a House on the back of the trees. Be a half mile east of the road. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't know what the Brandon. Yeah, because he's been parking his car out there on the road. <laughs> and the sheriff's office has got out of my new phone calls about that. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I don't know if that's what I don't know if that's what this is all about. Get the phone or what? Chances are he won't be there in two months. So this would be County Permit 02-2014? Make a motion to allow the central end to do a drop. Request on county permit 02 2014. Second that. We have a motion and a second to allow the drop across the full e for Century Lane County Permit 02 2014. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried.
the words in there by Scott Williams at the township meeting for uh, March the 26th. March 26th. That's on the Wednesday, unless you guys were not going to do that. Does that work the best for you? I thought that's what worked the best uh, for you last year, year, so. That's not good. I'll be here. Yeah. Be fine. Yeah. 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 Annex. Yeah. We, have to, we have to reserve our own annex. <laughs> it might be better. <laughs> if it is, we'll come up with an absurd dictate out of that. You got the information about 050 that are about to explain that a little bit. The study? Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna paint a stock bar. Which is a white, yellow, yellow paint on the, on the pavement for people. It tells people where to stop and back up. They're going to paint that up the way it is right now on there. I mean, with under the present road condition. No, they'll no when we're when we're done. Yeah, when, when the weather permits and the pavement's warm enough, they'll paint a stop bar on the pavement. That's all that. Factoring in on the well, if you're ready to report, I don't know that you're ready to be factoring in all the other stuff that just doesn't, doesn't come close to. And since the lighting, some of the lighting went up on these nights, some of that stuff's not because people tend to slow down when they get around our lights. Mm -hmm. Because there was going to be some of that was quite, you know, there was quite a weight advantage to some of that. Most of the time, there's people who pull up that are stopped and for don't some reason attention. don't don't see or can't fix that. No, you can't. Unfortunately, I'm sure some days all the other mother manufacturers will have little sensors out there that say do not pull out or something, you know. But until that day, that's. But did you see the, uh, the cost of roundabout over yeah. there? A bike or a low pass, I mean, that's a ton of money. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the statement, though, that like, there have been nine wrecks and five of them were from people that were under 20 or older, 77, so it's kind of like, don't be young and old and break up there. <laughs> You're stupid. I didn't think they knew that. Well, I mean, but that's how they break down their criteria. I mean, because it's either young, inexperienced drivers, or it's older drivers. Older than the drivers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> the alternatives there are you're not going to get there, one of the two. Um, and then, did I send you that deal from what John sent me from? He did look at that deal over here. At the co op. At the co op. Yes. And the state owns quite a bit of that right away back to there. He said it wasn't scaled out, but. He suggested, and I, just, I, I don't know if I forward, did I forward it on to all three of you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he suggested one of you contact, and what do you guys contact? Either the Deputy Secretary Younger or Secretary King, and explain to him why we would like to do, do this project. He thought it would be around 120 Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we back to the all the way to the bridge. Yes. All the way to the yeah. north side of the bridge. Yeah. 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 Close. Yeah. 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 But the but the, the John scaled that out and what he could, he thought on what it looked like on Google Earth was it probably most of that probably most of the problem is probably on the state side. <laughs> but whether they'll choose to do anything or not. And maybe they will because it's a small project, but, but what the co op told her, what we have is the federal language to come back in there and say, mm -hmm. uh, I think it would, be, it would be worth trying to pursue it. Because it is right. And, I, and, and we talked about it, he said there's no way it would come under high risk railroads. Who should we contact? 
Transportation Secretary King over the Deputy Secretary of uh, that's this Department of Transportation Secretary. Can, that's K not Secretary. Okay. Well, it's a little confusing because I think the Transportation Secretary of the Senate is King too. You're not talking about him. No, I'm telling you, this, this is the head of K not. This is this is the governor of the on cabinet of the Senate. Probably the deputy director, they're the ones that actually get stuff done. Well, actually, the director isn't an engineer, which is unusual for KDOT because that's probably the first time in a long time, if at all, that that ever happened. But Deputy Younger is a PE, so. Okay. Did you want to do that, Clay? Sure. And if, if you want if you want to talk to John before you call up there and talk to him or communicate with him, you know, he just have to call him. Anybody need that? You know, it's like at least no one I'm talking about. Hey, we want a new payment on there. Well, we liked about two days ago. Sign project done. So. But number one, it is a terrible location. In fact, oh, that? in oh, fact, yeah. yesterday. There was a hopper pulling off the scale, and he wasn't paying any attention. Of course, he was trying to miss the stop sign, and he was way almost over into the to the west ditch. Mm -hmm. Even and he tied up traffic, and either way they pull out, or they, yeah, it's yeah. The ditch is that's still not That's what it's <laughs> down. Yeah, I'm surprised something has never happened there, which would cause a lawsuit for. Yeah. Lots of people. Or, you know, my Because lots of people are going to be named on it just, yeah. just because. Yeah. <laughs> and my other thought is maybe they should make it one way. Enter from the, from the west and, and exit from the east. But, and some do. Mm -hmm. And there's less of a problem of getting in there. And then, but what's tearing up the road is when they're coming off, going sure. west and turning and then going back sure. behind. Sure. I mean, they're just shoving that asphalt. Well, this wasn't designed for tractor no, trailers. So yeah, if you give me his number and I'll talk to him. Okay. I'll give him a heads up. That was just FYI. I, I just I just wanted you guys to see if that's where he was at on the track. No. I think we'll just keep searching for a little while. That's a little bit of that's probably twenty five thousand over the but I don't think we'll get that out of the truck. And then he shaved some off that by not putting new, new tires on it, so I'll make it. And I do talk to Ron Harlow about the trailers. He's got a couple of them in there. Yeah. That's a pretty nice looking truck. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the problem we have is on the front of the frame. frame is, they, the radiators all drop down now because it's sloped in the hoods. Mm -hmm. And we need frame extensions or place. If the truck needs to be built with frame extensions or you have to have so you can extend the frame out to hang that snow pile on. And if you don't have that, it gets very dangerous in the way. It's just quite a problem. I just want to show you guys okay. what we're doing. Appreciate it. How much you're going to push me over a little bit? Well, actually, we don't have a line item on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there never has been, so it's. I mean, a well, long time ago, I can remember when the 93 when we had so much snow and we ended up using more fuel. I can remember Roger saying, well, how's going to use so much more fuel this year? You, well, you were downstairs in the merchant. <laughs> and we go, really? <laughs> Where did you think we put this fuel? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a weird 
question myself, but that's auditors in general. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, been between Reno and Stafford County lots of times here recently, and you've been a beat all the heck in rights for keeping the roads clean. The guys have done a good job. Yeah. And most of the time we, we try to start early in the morning. And I try to get them on my talk. I mean, yeah. Too many things happen after dark. Yeah. The guys get tired. We run over 12 or 14 air day and then we come back and try to make the next day attention spans and things like that. Yeah. So we'll try, really try to keep it, I really try to keep it to a 12, 14 air day unless something really bad is happening. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs help or something. We'll go over the room and try to be Ready for us? So, so Soon. The chairman says, yeah. Oh, Clayton, you want to introduce you? Yes, well. <laughs> <laughs> I know one, I don't remember her name. <laughs> My name's Jenna. Jenna. I'm the Jenna. tourism activities coordinator okay. at the convention. Chris Collier's from the Great Bend Convention Bureau, and, and uh, so they're coming down this morning to show us the interactive map that the scenic byway has introduced, or you guys, you're going to introduce it. It's not final yet, is it? It is yeah. final. It is. As, okay. as, yeah, we'll explain as we go, right? Okay. So fire up your laptop. All right. <laughs> Come forward, please. We will do that. I'll let you file up the laptop. I'll take this. Uh, Come on up here, Jenna. They're doing that. I brought a couple of other things. First of all, you may not have known, but we've been operating on a two-year grant to implement some marketing for the byway, which has been good for all seven communities. But one of the things that we did, I brought you fast, and <laughs> one of the things we did was to buy some things when we go sometimes to travel riders or motor coach groups or like international powwow, um, sometimes we'll have giveaways. And so these were water bottles that we were able to get the rain gauge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it too. Farm boys. Farm boys in the rain. It's a big rain gauge. I don't know. Yeah, actually, I think you said snow. Yeah, just use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that was one of the things, one of the other things that we have been able to do is to, um, do some nice size advertising in 
publications like the Kansas Visitor's Guide. She can have mine. Oh, so yeah, because I, I can take I have, care of you. Okay. I get this. Okay. Um, so this is this is just an example, and we've done um, the Kansas. I don't know if you get Kansas Magazine, but Kansas Magazine just came out this week, and if you look through that, there's a full page ad. This same full page ad in there for the. Um, for the byway in the Kansas Magazine, and we'll be advertising in all the Kansas magazines this year, and with AAA will be some of the focus of what we've been doing. Another thing that I brought is a new brochure that we have developed for the byway that kind of talks about um, talks about agritourism, um, what they might see that's ag related. Um, and who the, uh, the agritourism operators are within the byway byway corridor. So that's a new one. And then the last thing that I have is KDOT is operating right now on a grant to develop um, a strategic plan for hike and bike paths on all of the byways. And you guys did the, the letter of support because what they're going for the next round is the implementation with the two national byways being ours and the Flint Hills would be the first two chosen for implementation. As part of that, they have put up an online survey for people who bike, who hike, or whatever, and they're encouraging the public to really get online and take this and, and get their input in. So anything you guys can do down here to get this in the newspaper to get word out about this would be, chamber newsletters, whatever, would be um, would be appreciated by, by KDOT. So. So you just go on the website to vote? Uh-huh. And it, it just, it takes, oh, maybe five minutes. So there's just not that many questions. But it's like, you know, do you hike? Do you bike? You know, are you affiliated with any highway? You know, and you, you get a chance to kind of, um, like I said, give, get your input on, on what are priorities for, you know, for you and for this area. So I would encourage you to help get the word out. Okay, are you Huh? Who do I need to connect to? How does she need to get online here? Oh. Do you have Wi Fi? Um, do the set the seven hundred one. Okay, that's one. Should be public. Oh, it looks like it's locked. Oh crap. That's not it. That's better. Okay. <laughs> See, they all appear to be blocked. Um, I call my tech guy. He, okay. knows, he knows my password. <laughs> okay. Well, we're waiting on that. Do you have any questions at this point, guys? How's your life? <laughs> um, my tell them about the uh, the kiosk that okay. at, the, at the rest area. Okay, I can do that. Um, when we when we first did the the byway, while well, we've got interpret our own interpretive signage, K dot came out and did like nice big kiosk, one for each byway, and the byway committee voted, and ours the one for our byway went up at K four at that scenic overlook between Hoisington and Claflin. It's really the only scenic overlook of Cheyenne Bottom. Well, they've gotten a, a grant to develop a second one. So each byway would have two. And so we discussed it and went, well, the, that one went on the north end. It's only fitting that the next big one, because they're they're big, what are they, four or five feet, something there. And they've got a roof on them, and they're really nice that he'd go on the, the south end of the 
the byway. So it has to be within the byway corridor, which is a, six miles from the road. But we talked to Clayton and uh, Richard Beckman, and we double checked with KDOT to make sure that there wasn't an issue issue with oh. uh, closure. But okay. it will be put That's at uh, the rest area on the highway. Is it 50? 50. 50 highway. Which gets a lot of traffic and is really a, a nice stop, but it so it might push people to traveling that into the communities and, and up into our area a little better. So we'll keep you posted on the, Thank you, the, sure. the process, but um, right now that's that's the site that, that we have put in for, so it should be a nice addition down here. So my concern was when they first started talking about this, then it hit the papers and the news media about Russell about shutting down the one up on I-70 because of lack of water. But Russell was supplying water to that rest area on 70. Uh, now let's see, water is piped from St. John yeah. all the way over to... Yeah. Uh, but they, Richard did some investigating in Tokata and said, no, that rest area might be closed. And consequently, they have, they're not going to close the line of us either, so. Okay. What we have done right now to show you that, if you guys remember, this was part of the grant, but it was also, um, you helped pay for this, as did Barton County. So the three of us partnered to, to get this going. What was really attractive about this is that once it got developed and it, it got to where it was ready to sit on the website, it could, we could all share it. So Stafford County can put it on their website. If St. John has a website, they can put it on. The only thing I think we all agreed on is that we wanted to, to stay on, um, away from private businesses. So if, you know, the barbecue place wanted to put the interactive map, they could put a hot link to the counties or to the cities, but really couldn't host the map on anything other than designated sites. That's kind of funny. What? The barbecue place wanted to put a hot lamp. <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, uh, I'm telling you, I haven't had enough caffeine or I don't buy it that kind of day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got that before you did, and that's rare. <laughs> I, I know, it's like my brother. It was a short cup of coffee. So what we did is we, right now, this shows you how it sits on our, our website. The Byway website is currently under construction to do new development, so I'm, I'm not showing you the example from there, but we just <coughs> dropped it in, so it that's what it looks like. And then I want to tell you that this took forever to get the information dumped in for each community, which is why Jenna is here, is because Jenna spent months building this database. So um, this is what it this is what it looks like. And then can everybody see? Mm -hmm. okay. And then when you go up to the map key, what you'll see is that it, it has two sets of groupings, one by what to do, where to eat, where to sleep, all that kind of stuff. And then we also broke it down by community because we realized that it, it's a byway, but some people will just travel the southern half. Some will just travel the northern half, and they're going to look for where to eat, where to sleep, what, and always where to shop. Um, so let's go to. Okay, you get. It. Then go. Okay. Unclick them. Right now, it's showing everything, and if you hit this big eye right here, it will hide everything, and then you can select okay, what so you want to choose. Let's go to St. John. But when you, but when, then when you look through the list, it will tell you, then it will break it down even on what to do, where to eat. Um, it, it's got not only, as far as retail, we only put what was unique retail because for visitors, they don't really care that you have a Dollar General. If they're shopping in your 
antique store, they might run into Dollar General, but Dollar General is not going to be the draw. So we kept it what was unique, but we also included grocery stores and where they can get gas and kind of the, the essentials. Um, we've done everything we can and, and hopefully have had everybody proofread this. The nice thing about it is we can update it if a restaurant goes out of business. There's been some issues with the Google Map. Um, Google Map locations are sometimes not not because we put them in wrong, but because Google Map has has sometimes some programming errors. So we've gone back and worked some of those corrections. But we would encourage you to, if you see anything that's changed, anything that's different, anything, uh, Clayton went through and did the first proof, and and we'll maintain it on our back end. Jenna will be the go-to person for updating and, and doing corrections and, and all of that. Um, there's photos you want to go in and open something for them so they can see what it... Um, as far as... Find a restaurant in. Good place. <laughs> so this is what it will tell you. It will give you the GPS coordinates if you're if you're traveling by that. It will give you just basic information on bars, where it's at, what the phone number is, if they happen to have what their eyes are, if they happen to have a website or anything like that. It's it will give you all of their social media and and their web information. Um, so we, we think it will be a really nice addition and help people actually be able to get into our small rural communities and do some exploring by actually people when, when they are on the ground and they're in your community, they are normally picking up a brochure. But what we have found out about tourism is that at least 85% of people may do all their planning online. So you want to make sure that you've got as much information for them online that makes it easy. That one of the problems we've always had with the, the Byway website and, and what we had on the Byway before, because of um, federal restrictions on Byways and the grant dollars that was used, there was a lot of information about the Byway, about the road, about the wetlands, but we could not get as much community information on there as what we wanted. Well, now they have also found out that people are really looking for that authentic rule and that enhances a byway. And by redoing this website, it takes it off of grant funding so we can put all of this into place. So, and isn't there, isn't there something where there, didn't we, was this, this one or something else where there were pictures? I thought we had pictures. I know, but didn't we submit photos or was that? For yes, we did. I thought we did. I there thought were pictures. Um, I thought we had photos for everything. But they're, yeah, we did. They're not there. And I'm wondering if it was for this or if it was for it, the, it was for this. It was I for remember this. putting in the links now. Here. We'll check with them when we get back to the eyes. Yeah, we're looking at it, I'm going. Yeah, I was just I'm, thinking I'm, about I'm thinking too. We collected photos. Because I was thinking that when you went and say, for example, which one right there, there would have been a picture. Uh, yes. Yeah, there should have been. And the same. Because uh, Mary I brought up the jump drive. Mm hmm. Yeah, because the guy from Classland brought like the 94 store. Yeah, yeah. To give them a call and get back. We'll find out where they're at and get them on. So and then there was um, <clears throat> the golf course is on there. Uh, Go step. The RV park is the RV park at the rest area. Can't remember. Pine Haven is on there or not? I, mean, I think it is. I, it's, it's, I think it's listed it under St. John. It was. And then the city of Stafford has a little RV park. Yeah, it's, and some of them were kind of a toss-up. It's like the, you know, the scenic overlook on K4. It's, does that go 
uh, poison pen or did that go right. on plasma? Right. And, and you just kind of flip the coin and went, well, well we're just going to put it in, and you know, as long as it gets there. So because I know I've got to make a change on the <clears throat> on the writs. I saw them on the sign yesterday. They're See, going digital, and they're going to be open every weekend. What's the other one I was going to try? Pinehaven RV. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then the, there's one in Stafford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And then as you. See, there's different symbols for the restaurant and for what's an attraction and where to stay. So hopefully that makes moving around on the map just a little bit easier for for people. And I think they can. Yeah, and it will go right to and tell them like what it is. And this is relatively new technology for us in our area, but people that are used to being on the web and doing travel and that have a little bit more sophistication than, than rural America is catching up with. Um, this will be a, a good... The other thing we have able to do is we have developed some itineraries that... And we... I can't see. Can you open that? that they can either click on this and say put this into my itinerary so they can go through and click on things that they are going that they would like to see and it will build them their own itinerary or we have some sample itineraries that they can get into and um, they can go oh well this would work because I think I'd like to do this or it gives them a starting place of something to, to do so we'll show you one of those maybe So there's one of the sample itineraries. Yeah. It's a how many day? Scroll back up. Yeah, it's a so it's a weekend itinerary is what it is. So anyway, that's the update. There's the IMAP. We have the Jenna has the code when everybody knows down here. If you want it on the county website, if the St. John wants it on their website, if Stafford wants it on theirs, it can easily be housed on on any of those, and then as we go in the back end and do the updates and the mm -hmm. corrections and everything, it will automatically clean it up and, and update and refresh on everybody's. So we hope it's a useful tool and kind of gives people a little better look at what we've got. Very good. I wouldn't trust Google Maps very far. <laughs> no, but so many of these are based on that, so we've had to, and that's why we wanted everybody to go in and really look because what was it Poisington you had to make changes like two or yeah, three times. Yeah, they put the activity center like three miles north of Poisington. <laughs> so we had to Don't fight them for like a that. week. Do what? Side, what? Uh, yeah. Do what? Oh, Del Tree Farms on the west side of the highway on your map and it's actually on the east side. The, okay. I mean it's just Google Maps is just not correct. And, and it's Kirk, Kirk, Kirk in this four miles yeah. north here rather than just my address is right at the feed line up there. Right? <laughs> so at really, if you guys look at this and you go, oh, like that, it's on the wrong side. Really, it's it's just, you know, we're, you know, we go from us to Lunar Cow and Lunar Cow and it goes to, to Google and and it may take us a little bit, but we get them, we get them cleaned up. So don't hesitate to, to let us know as you look through it. And you get your community in, but Hudson's the easy one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody, everybody else is a little bit of a trip. So, it, and don't hesitate if you have questions, if you want to know an update. Clayton usually 
we we stay Velcro pretty good yeah. on on keep. So he he usually knows what what I know, um, but don't hesitate to to call our office. The we do the um, the CBB for if you don't know is the designated marketing manager for the byway. Uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau and Board of Directors said that is something that they would like to do for the byway is, you know, we we manage the, the marketing for that and, and um, they're committed to continuing to do that. So we think it's a good partnership. Very good. Thank Thanks. you very much. You bet. Very good job. At least you didn't have to get the dog sled out. Oh, no. Hey, you know, what was this? This is our... Our third attempt to try and get down here. So, better than last so, oh man, no joke. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. See you in a couple of hours. Yes. Yeah. For lunch. <laughs> Kurt, are you coming? No, I don't think I'll be able to make it. Okay. Well, we'll just put your name beside you know certain tasks. Oh, who's going to be that? Oh, Kurt will be that. That's a great idea. <laughs> Joe had sent these two letters down. Actually, he wanted signatures on it last. So the farm bill? Yes. <laughs> it's already been passed. Uh, yeah. Hey, forget that. That's okay. It was a great thought while I had yeah. it. Okay. Really get, really get past um, this is it, um, information from the attorney we hired on that lawsuit on the oil and gas depletion uh, fund, just kind of overviewing how the money was spent. So uh, more money? No. No. Uh -uh. We're good. Um, I have the um, maintenance renewal for the elevator. <laughs> we pay this yearly. This I thought it happen. was the company that didn't do it. What? I thought that was the maintenance company that said yeah. Well, this is the only Nobody maintenance likes. company we can find in the country. Have they ever been out? You'd have to ask my guy. <coughs> Has it been out? Is it working now? It worked with me and Kurt. So far. Some days it works, some days it doesn't. Some days they were out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This was right after he told us that it didn't work. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's just, it's haunted. It's, it's good moon. for you to take the stairs. It is haunted. Cardio. That's all yeah, it's a full moon, it is. So, do you want me to go ahead and re, re up this maintenance agreement? Well, we have to have one, though. Yeah, right. for insurance purposes. Or insurance oh, right. way of your choice. Okay. I just want <laughs> feedback on that. Okay. Now, I have a letter from Amy McVeigh on parking across from the courthouse. Over, I would give it to you. I sent her an email yesterday after the tussle she got into with a certain elected official, and I informed her we provided parking space, but we can't force people to park there. So, is she on the street? No. I'm giving you the letter. Can I ask who the lucky elected official was? Second floor? She mentioned you and... I'm, I parked there before the meeting. She mentioned you and then Lisa. Lisa parked over there Monday. And you thought it was the end of the world. There is never anybody there even when I come out of there. That's public park. She doesn't get there tonight. Exactly. But I'm, I'm giving you this letter. Okay. Now, would like to meet with you guys at 8.30 next week. He can't come today about all this. Okay. So maybe we could postpone that executive session I have planned. I mean, we could start the ball rolling today because if Rob's going to be here today, he's got some ideas. Well, they could throw some things around. So why not hurt to talk to no, at least. Thanks, Okay. And that is all I have for you. Okay. So you could reset for a little bit if you want. Unless, Joe, you have something on port of before. Did you get that letter? I sent the letter to him. It's, it's a fascinating 
whole yeah. area of, of the Kansas statutes. I never knew all that existed until I forced myself to read it over the weekend. I read it. There's not that many in the United States. Well, but it's just amazing that you know, where Kansas, they're, they're great about limiting the authority of you know, government, but for some reason, once you create a port authority, it, it's got all manner of powers and authority. I mean, power of eminent domain? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll recess. Here's a, I mentioned the letter I sent you, here's that statute that I quoted from, that's horrible English, first of all, that's why I call it Kansas speak. As I read that, it, it, it suggests that we have to put a question with the voters for funding. Before the tax Before the yeah. right. Yes. Before, yeah. right. Oh. So that's why I say I think we can do this in a measured way. That this action does not obligate the taxpayers to need anything. What would happen as I as I read this is that the board of directors will have to set forth a plan. They have to put that before the public in, a, in an official way, public notice. They have the opportunity to comment, um, and specifically those who have land surrounding any property that the court acquires have the opportunity to um, object, and if a majority of those people object, then it can go to a vote of the general population. Well, I'm talking about a vote on the funding. Because it's a, you know. Don't you have to have funding before you get that far, though? I think that that's all part of your funding, is it not? I mean, when you well, submit a plan for what you're going to do, that would also incorporate what kind of taxes. Do you have that letter handy, Ada? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I, I quoted from the statute because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's... It's very awkward English, and, and this is not my language, this is a statutory language. Any city or county creating or participating in the creation of a port authority, comma, before any taxes are levied, shall submit the question of whether an annual tax levy may be made on the assessed taxable tangible property of such city, comma, county, comma, or a combination thereof, comma, in the amount thereof to the electors of such city or county comprising such authority. Which I section is that? That is out of 123403 sub B. Which 
suggests to me that before you can, you know, line item you know, port authority in your budget, you, you have to have voter approval. Yeah. I mean, that to me is a plain meaning of that. It's, it's inartfully worded. I mean, I would, if I were the draft, I would have said, as a precondition to creating a port authority, you know, the creating county city must you know, submit to the voters. It, it's, it looks like that's a something that has to be done. You know, put a question on the ballot. You know, kind of like we, okay. you know, shall we, shall the county board of county commissioners of Stafford County, come Kansas, kind of levy for the you know, tax year, whatever, 2015, since we're off the top of 2015. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. X number of mills, like your dollars on the line. Because for, for next the next election next. is, you got a general in August, a primary in November. 2015 budgets will be done in August. So you might even have to have a special election on this to, in order to, allow, to, allow, in order, to have money tax. for 2015. So, so the if, question, if, how do we fund this thing that we've created? I'm trying to get this clear in my mind. Uh, the order that we take to, to once we if we agree today for this resolution, does that give give everybody the green light to take it to the legislature? They approve it and then does that put the whole thing in motion at that point my understanding is it can't it doesn't have any money right but we can then go to the process of setting up articles of incorporation and writing this plan that is required for public approval and then it could be but this still costs anything to do with this these, these initial phases that we're doing now. And I should also have mentioned too that um, for the purpose that I, I wanted to have some um, idea of the cost that we would be incurring if we took the next step of writing articles on corporation, and um, the, the estimate that I got from trying to blank on their name, but the firm in Topeka that did the uh, work for Southwest Kansas, they estimated between five and ten thousand. The work that must it said it was actually quite a bit less because the lobbying part's the time intensive part and we're taking care of that. So but for the legal work of, of setting up articles and incorporation and doing that for In Southwest Kansas, did they have a plan or a business that was interested before they got to that? Theirs place? was a theirs was a different deal. They weren't doing it as a development in the same way that I'm proposing we use this as kind of an industrial park. In their case, they have the Cimarron Valley Railroad, a short line railroad, which is their only rail access in some of those counties. And it was at the brink of bankruptcy, needing a lot of improvements to the rail domain to, to, to keep going. And it was their <coughs> way of pooling resources from several counties. And they also got some state funding. And then the, the company also put in. So between the, that was their mechanism to be able to pool money and all those entities, and, it, and, and they provided for about $15 million worth of improvements to that rail. And the way that they're doing it, they are not managing it necessarily as something that they're trying to develop more commerce for related to that on an ongoing basis. Um, Pretty specific is what they want to do. Yeah. And that was just to move grain. Yeah, and keep that option open to move grain. And their selling point was to KDOT was the less truck traffic and carrying up the roads. And, so. and this entity could also be receiving funds from KDOT, and it's very much the same argument mm -hmm. um, angle, is that the more that we can develop commerce related to rail, um, the more, the more safe that is, the more it takes trucks off the road for longer distances and so forth. And it, it is, and it is going to probably increase truck traffic in a certain location. And there may also be KDOT involvement with re providing turn lanes or things that might otherwise mitigate the traffic and improve safety. We've talked about the idea of whether this might be something that. Um, causes more um, attention to be given to the intersection of US 50 and 281. It's not currently um, marked for any kind of upgrades, but this might help improve the priority for something like that. 
um, to increase the traffic through there. Yeah. Um, but there's ways that, that the KDOT can be involved with infrastructure on off of the highway too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's rail programs that we could be um, applying to, and this entity could be the recipient. Um, same with the there's an economic development program through KDOT. There um, may also be ways that that we could fund some activity without even having to go through that process of of going to you know milling or assessing taxes. Just reading through it myself, I, I see there's two safeguards that we have no matter what happens. One is money that you have to have voter approval. Two, it can be dissolved at any time that we need to be. So I can't see that it would hurt to proceed with it. Yeah. Because the first two steps has to be the county resolution and then get the state yeah. and the legislators to pass that. And yeah, that what, what, what's the legislature passes the current resolution, this goes away. Well. Yeah. So I feel comfortable pursuing and you know, you know, if we come to a dead end, we come to a dead end and it could be very beneficial, but I do want to have some safeguards in there that I you know, feel like it's not gonna just go out of control and we have eminent domain on people that don't want to lose their land and you know, upset a whole other bunch of people. That's the resolution. So if we're talking for 2015, 2016. 2016. It's going to be 16 because you don't have the legislature. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. So yeah. We're Let's working with this there. legislative session. I would think if anything was to be levied, we could certainly work it out with that election we already have it. Yeah. yeah, for 2016, we got both, you know, yeah. the you know, primary and, and the general coming up. That would be a good time to do that. But, 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 what do you call it? The gubernatorial election here. You said you have primary in August and then the general in November. The problem with this election is not the presidential election, but maybe this will make them come out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're probably better <laughs> off with There's the. There's not much I can do about it. Oh, I know. You're better I know. off with the <laughs> <laughs> November. Yeah. 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 Primary from Kansas. There's signs everywhere. You can't force them to get out. <laughs> they have their chance. <sighs> So okay. we put this on August or November? I'm going to say November, you'll have a better turnout. Yeah. I mean, primary, <coughs> primaries in the so-called off years or group of <coughs> years, the turnout's historically 20% or less. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, adopt resolution 2014-A, which is a resolution of the Board of Stafford County Commissioners authorizing the Stafford County Court Authority upon passing a concurrent revenue. Resolution of a current resolution pursuant to KSA 12 3402. We can condense that. Did you settle that? Okay, well, we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2014 8, establishing the authority or getting the state to do a concurrent resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. As I said earlier, we have to start somewhere. I mean, we'll just check the Kansas Register to see if the one of the legislature yeah. passes that resolution. Because once it's published in the register, that's a you know, go ahead to protect. 
occur for the next step, which would be the question to the voters? But the voters will only be questioned if if there's a specific tax proposed. Yeah. yeah. If you want taxes left. Yeah. If you want you want a stream of income for the port authority from the Stafford County tax base, it has to be. How else would you pay for it? Well, I, I don't think we're sitting on any amount of money last time. Not I that I can find. find. Yeah, but there, I think that there's, and the, the, there may, we, there may, we may end up having to assess some minimal amount. But when you consider that, I think typically the tenants pay in to offset any kind of bonds that are issued. In fact, I think there's something that talks about how it's supposed to be revenue neutral. Um, and the possibility of acquiring some state grants and so forth. I'm hopeful that we can keep that amount of taxation very minimal. Uh, but mm -hmm. I hope we can keep it pretty minimal and, and go about this in a measured way so that we're not investing in infrastructure without knowing that we definitely have an anchor tenant involved. And that tenant could put a private money to do the same thing for a Articles of incorporation and stuff like that, right? Wouldn't that be private money? Well, the Port Authority has authority. What has authority, authority, authority to money. borrow money? I mean, arguably, you could borrow from a non-bank at a very favorable interest rate. I mean, I guess somebody can donate. I don't know. I mean, I guess you can donate to. Well, they've got their entities. own borrowing power. Yeah, they're pretty well their own. According to this, they the, are a, kind of their own uh, I mean, entity of government. So You're you right. can certainly they borrow, are. like I say, at a de minimis interest rate, like 0.05% or something, if somebody. <clears throat> but any county money that was spent would be tax levy money would have to be yeah, approved. Yeah, anyway. by the yeah, yeah. So I read that statute. Yes, that's my read on it. But I think you could do it very easily without. Yeah, there might be other ways around it. Tax, any taxation to, to make this thing work. I don't know. But what, what's created? Yeah. The port, yeah. port authority is its own. Zero's a, I wouldn't say zero, but I, I would say with the right circumstances and the right people, I can see where that wouldn't be an issue. Okay, I think we're seeing. The port, port authority was created as its own vehicle. I mean, right. It can chart its own course.
the same down the line. But <laughs> Maxwell and Stafford do. So that's happened over there. Where? At Maxwell and Stafford. No, because they haven't cared all their kids anyway. We have some of the same time about it. And do we, do you have any legal grounds to keep them out of school? Just the state I could go stomp my feet and make a stink. I can live in the school or the board at the school board. They would protect themselves a little better than, they may not be than that. I mean, I but think like, that's something that would And then also at Maxville and Stafford, you have up to a certain day to bring your stuff up to date or you don't come back to school, which is like September 15th. I just went to St. John January 7th and brought a bunch of kids up to date. So, see, they're pretty I think that would just expose them to more to no end. So they have to have some kind of a written statement from a, a physician on file to accept them. So there is an exemption to the thing. <laughs> There's a, a medical, and I think there needs to be a religious. There is. Like Those are not or exempted on religious or medical. Yeah. So and then they tried to get a personal, personal one passed through the legislature. Those are the two things. <coughs>
did it, kept it pretty well. Up. I thought we did pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. um, the next page shows patient encounter. You can see down here I kept 2012 is 10,000, 2021 and 2015 is So I actually had less patient encounters but better collection rate.
I think they look and they see Stafford County EMS, well that comes before H for Health, so they take the test. And I called, and I called, the number I called was in Phoenix. The claims are adjudicated out of somewhere else but the uh, place that gets the money back is in Atlanta. So it's, oh, Atlanta? In Atlanta? Somewhere. It's just strong all over. So how does, how do the people out in Phoenix know what the people in Atlanta are doing? They don't. Is that, that's, is that part of the Affordable Care Act? Mm, well, I know that's part of Great King Care and Great King's is good. Yeah. Yeah. If you just get a sign, most of them just have a sign. You might have a car set ready to come in. I say, you know, you might want to think about changing the code in health care or something else. You're not supposed to be there. Yeah. Then I got a call from United Healthcare, some PR lady, and she said, My guy out there is having a hard time selling United Healthcare. I don't understand it. I said, Well, I do. I told her what I've been doing. She says, Well, you have to look after your patients best. Because at that time, Farmer Clinic, Pratt Hospital, none of the doctors at Pratt were taking it. But I think I asked them today, and they're taking it. So I guess I'll just shut up about it. It's a nightmare. So, yeah, I think they started just the first of January. Carol said that I asked her today. So they take it now. A lot of these United Healthcare people, they went to Dr. Farmer Pratt, I had to pay out their pocket if they paid it all, which they probably didn't. Yeah. All right, I want to talk about my cell phone. You want to talk about something? Sure, sure. Okay. My cell phone is paid for out of the public health emergency insurance grant. When the grant goes away, some goes away. But I would be glad to buy a phone to figure out how to go to the grant. I'll buy it, then it can be my phone. That's the one your biological refrigerator talks to? Yes, it talks to. Yes. And it's 24-7 connected to Topeka because they want us to be able to do communication, so it's got the email on it and the text on it. And I'll tell you, I use it for everything. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, it's my phone. Every 95% account has a number. So I would be glad to buy it if you figure out how I can still charge it through the grant because it's already charged out on the budget. So does it need to be replaced? Or what? Your phone? No. What do you mean it ran out of the grant? If the grant ends, then I'll just oh, okay. You know, I have my own phone like right, I used to right, for years right. and years. I used my own phone for county business. Right. I didn't charge you guys. So you're talking about you personally purchasing this phone? Mm -hmm. Buying it from the county somehow. Mm -hmm. If you can figure it out. Because I don't want any hate to discontent. <laughs> So the grant is not going to be available anymore? Yeah, well, it should be. It's good. This grant goes to Jan July 1st, and it'll probably be renewed, but there could be a point in time where there just be regional funds for public health emergency preparedness and not local funds. So if that local grant goes away, then I won't, the phone won't be paid for by a grant. It'll be paid for out of my pocket, which is fine. But like I said, I used my own phone for years. And charge you guys, but I'll be glad to buy the phone somehow. And then it would be my phone. And then nobody could gripe about it. I guess my phone is Are you lost? <laughs> what? Why do you feel like you need to purchase this phone personally? Well, it's okay. Are you um, I mean <laughs> If it's a county phone, why don't you just budget to pay for the... I did. It is budgeted. It's in the PHEP grant. Can't you just change that? Can't you just budget in your regular fund for it? Well, no, because PHEP mandates and I have a phone that I can do that's 24 7. I understand that, but if that grant goes away, can't that just come... Oh, well, yeah, but, but you know, I thought that. there was an issue with no. No, 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 Oh, that no. issue is totally separate. Not what you're talking you at about. all. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about it. No. no. Uh -huh. well, here I was <laughs> no. feeling guilty whenever I text somebody. <laughs> that's why I can't no. think of it. No, that, that's <laughs> the 
that's something totally, 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 totally different. No, that's not <coughs> you. You're fine. All right. Well, let's work this out. Okay. 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 Okay.
we've been having a lot of turnover in our PHEP group because um, Yvonne, uh, Saline County, have you read that in the paper? About Saline County, that they went from city county just to county. Well, it's been a big mess. Well, Yvonne retired because she thought it was a good time to get out. You know. So Suzette, who's our coordinator, got that job as an interim. So she can't be our coordinator anymore. So now we have to look for a new coordinator. And Mary Beth over in Pawnee County has stage four children. Oh, no. Yes. It's awful. And so we don't know what's going to happen with her. And Lily's going to retire the first of January. Just a lot of, oh, and another gal from a person county is retired in this month. So just a lot of unrest and turmoil. And we don't know what's going to happen with who or who's going to be our coordinator.
Stephen Hill. There's a lot of Medicare. Yeah, yeah. Medicare is our big our cash cow. So we like it when they pay. When they don't, it's. <laughs> and when Medicaid, you get about 20% and then your commercial, like I said, they'll pay about 80% while you're in, and then 20 of it is write off, or it's um, usually it's patient responsibility due to co pay, co insurance. Okay, we're adjourned.